Good morning in Chatelet, everyone. This is going to be my first real review of the day. This is going to be on the Dragonfly Cobalt, which will be obvious from the uh, picture you're looking at at the front of the box here. And uh, I'm kind of short on room here. It uh, tells you a few things on the front here. It shows a picture of this delightful little deck, which is right here. And see so if we can focus on that one better. Uh, get the box out of the way. Maybe it'll focus better here. Are we focused yet? Yes, here we go. Right there. Okay. It's not doing it like I wanted it to. It's a USB A, and it plugs into a computer, or you can use the included dragon tail right here, which uh, has USB C here, and then the uh, female A here, and uh, let's plug that in real quick. There. There's plugged into the dragon tail, and now you can go into any USB-C device right here. And then there's your headphone jack on the end, and let's see if we can at least focus on that. Oh yeah, there we go. Now we're getting good focus on that. AQ you see down at the bottom there, and then you see uh, dragonfly up there, and then of course they turn all the different colors. The, uh, let's see what it says on the back. The parts come from, I think, mostly China, Taiwan, whatever, but uh, they assemble in the USA. And uh, where Apple says assembled in the US, I don't know exactly what that means, but in these guys' case, that means that they test all the parts first before they go in and slap them together. So, uh, so the quality control is excellent and uh, the sound is pretty incredible. Now, before the Cobalt, we had. Uh, various other dragonflies and I'll show you one of those here and uh, in fact the most immediate predecessor with the best sound up until now was the dragonfly red which also comes in one of these little leather cases oops dropped that one too same thing um, USB-A on this end and then the headphone jack on the other and this did not come with a um, the red did not come with a uh, dragon tail and uh, but I guess they've uh, audio Plus has made these dragon tails for a while. Uh, the first one they made, I think, was just an extender so that uh, uh, USB ports that are uh, short on space would uh, you could you could extend the port out from your computer with a dragon tail and then uh, plug a thing in there so you'd have room for it and uh. So anyway, let's put this back up here for the moment. The uh, thing that I'm going to use this with is uh, I can use it with a computer, a desktop computer, where I have some uh, MQA files because it is an MQA renderer. But uh, primarily, I intend to use this with my uh, uh, iPad Pro, iPhone, XS Max, and my iPod. Uh, latest generation, all of which are 256 gigabyte, and so I have uh, 4416 and 4424 files on all of those devices, so I get uh, pretty darn good sound uh, using those as a uh, as a source. And then, um, of course, I have the uh, I didn't bring it along. I have the Jitterbug AudioQuest Jitterbug, and then uh, that can help for some noisy devices. It might clean up some of that. The, um, uh, the higher res tracks have to be converted to run on an iPhone in, in, in the native mode. It, it plays flack, but uh, it, yeah, I don't think it does 96K. You'd have to get a separate music player for that. So the equalizer player that I'm using, um, which kind of looks like this right here, equalizer. I'm trying to kill that reflection there. And that uses the... Uh, iPhone's native music, uh, whatever it is inside the guts, and uh, the sound of this compared to the red is what my main concern was. There's my um, original sales receipt from. Does it say here? Where's my uh, yeah. Todd the Vinyl Junkie, Three Forks, Montana? And I had to pay for this because I don't get anything for free. Two hundred nine nine ninety five U.S. dollars, and uh, a lot of people question whether it's worth it. Hundred dollars over the Dragonfly Red, 
How good is the red? The red is mighty good. Uh, red will give you about the same volume as the cobalt, even though the cobalt is lower power, uh, whatever that amounts to. Uh, they tell you in the book. In fact, let's look at some of the things in the book. Uh, the what I did to uh, test uh, my simple test to start off was I fired up a music track called uh, it's by Stephen Wilson called Luminol L U M I N O L and uh, I started that up with a cobalt and the bass the sound the the bottom end was just so nice and so full and so clear that uh, I played that through a few times and then went to the red. And the red was good, but not quite the same. And I do believe that most people, if they're audiophiles and they listen, they can find some tracks that are going to show the difference between the red and the cobalt. But whether that's worth $100 to somebody, I don't know. But anyway, they tell you some of the things in here that uh, maybe it's on the box is what I'm looking for. Uh, the box. They have some parameters that they talk about here, and maybe I should discuss some of that. Um, the decks inside your music players aren't that good. Well, they're actually pretty good today. Even the iPhone XS is uh, pretty good, got a pretty good DAC inside, and then you get the little dongle because it doesn't have a headphone jack anymore. And little dongles are pretty highly rated by most people. But there are other reasons why uh, those things aren't all that good. And then when you get into high resolution, of course, then you can hear the difference. And uh, it might not be satisfied. Anyway, this plays everything, including being an MQA renderer. It's not a decoder, just a renderer. And Apple is compatible with uh, Windows and Apple uh, OS X or whatever, and then uh, iOS and then Android. And then uh, you have to have the right cable if you're going iOS and Android. And it has the sample rates that turn the thing different colors. Uh, plugged into your phone. And then uh, it has a volume control that's bit perfect, 64 bit, but it's controlled by the source. And uh, it seems to work pretty well. And uh, I guess that's pretty much all there is to that. Comes in an owner's manual. And it looks like this on the front. We used to call these flight manuals. I don't know if they do that anymore. And uh, that's on the back. I got quest cobalt. And they got uh, pictures of the three different dragon tails in here. They don't have a dragon tail for uh, Apple Lightning. You have to uh, use the Apple device. But they recommend the Apple device that has the uh, charging port on it. So it has a charging port, headphone jack, and uh, the uh, Apple Lightning. And it costs more, probably $50, $60. But they claim it sounds better. In fact, mine uh, had a um, firmware upgrade, the, the, the adapter, which is pretty weird for a passive device like that. Truly passive. And then here's their uh, jitterbug right here. I have a jitterbug. Sometimes jitterbug works, sometimes doesn't. Depends on how noisy or, or anomalous your source is. If it's uh, something that you uh, something you need to uh, address, a uh, jitterbug might address it. Fifty dollars. Here's a setup for Windows. Seems to be pretty thorough. Tells you how to do it with a Mac. There's two parts to the Mac setup, and that is uh, one of them is the. Uh, system preferences and then others the uh, audio MIDI setup so you can't forget that and then uh, for your other devices it should be just plug and play and uh, I, I think that uh, tonality no matter what anybody says on this I think it's fairly neutral some people call it warm but it's not really warm it's not enough for you you know uh, as a matter of fact that luminol track I played uh, was so perfect I went back and played several other tracks that have fairly uh, boomy bass, like uh, uh, Lorena McKennett's uh, Mummer's Dance, um, U2's version of a uh, um, uh, U2 song that has a pretty boomy start to it. Uh, what's the name of the track? I should know what that is. Uh, let's see. U2. Come up with U2. 
I mean, uh, with or without you, with or without you, that's a pretty good boom there. A lot of uh, music tracks do have a boomy bass. Diana Krall's uh, Live in Paris has a fairly good amount of boom to it. But anyway, the Dragonfly renders those perfectly. It uh, doesn't increase the boom. There's no bloat. There's no boom. There's no pump. And uh, none of that stuff. None of that uh, uh, muddy, wumpy stuff. It's just nice and clean. So uh, I don't think it's overly warm. I think it's just uh, a really good sound. And the difference for a lot of people would be very subtle between the red and the uh, cobalt. However, um, yeah, the cobalt's a little shorter, too. So, let's see. These are non-commercial reviews, obviously. And uh, so, you know, it, I don't have to pump these up or spend any particular amount of time on them. But let's see if we can just slap these together. See, it's just a little bit shorter than the uh, red. And yeah, there, it's about a sixteenth of an inch shorter or something. But uh, it has uh, better components in it and uh, sounds better and that's what it's all about. So I highly recommend the uh, AudioQuest Dragonfly. I've been using them forever. And uh, any Dragonfly is good. Now the black before the red was much more efficient, but it was also a little grainy. So I don't really recommend the black unless you're on an extremely tight budget. It's a good deck, but um, I think most people today, if they have a high-tech phone, they'd be better off with a phone than adding a, a Dragonfly black. But the uh, red, high recommendation, and the uh, Cobalt, very high. In spite of the extra $100, I think uh, uh, most people will be able to use that uh, Dragon Tail right here with the USB-C. I certainly am. And uh, that's pretty much the song and dance right there. So uh, run right out and get this Dragonfly Cobalt. And if you can afford it, you will love it. Thank you very much.